Hello everyone, and my name is Logan, and welcome to a show I haven't done an episode of in almost a year, Disney Plus or Minus. Today we'll be reviewing the newly released Raya and the Last Dragon, which released yesterday, March 5th, as I write the script. The movie is available to watch in theaters or on Disney Plus with premiere access. That being said, I plan to sort this review into a couple of categories. We'll talk about the characters, the plot, there are spoilers, and my general thoughts on the movie, all while giving pluses and minuses along the way. At the end, I'll give you my final ranking of Disney Plus or Minus. Plot. I don't think I can justly talk about the characters without talking about the plot first. So this is not a spoiler free review as I mentioned, leave now if you don't want spoilers. That being said, there used to be a world called Kumandra. Everyone lived there in harmony thanks to the dragons that brought them water and rain. Until one day, the Druun came. The Druun are these evil ambiguous beings that feed on humans and turn them to stone. All of the dragons died in the fight to save the humans except one. That's Sisu. She created a dragon gem that turned the Druun away, put them back to sleep, and left the people safe. However, she disappeared in the aftermath. That being said, people would fight over the dragon gem, leading to an all-out war and the destruction of Kumandra. There are now five kingdoms where the last one stood. There are Tail, Talon, Spirit, Fang, and Heart, where Raya is from and where the dragon gem is being kept. Chief Benja, Raya's father, decides to attempt to end the war by inviting other factions to share a meal and bring Kumandra back to its former glory. Fang, the most dangerous of the factions, has other plans. Namari, the princess of Fang, tricks Raya into showing her the dragon gem and attempts to steal it, but not without telling Raya a story. The story says that after Sisu created the dragon gem, she fell asleep and drifted downstream to the end of the river. Which one? Who knows? Namari also gives Raya a gift, a necklace with a pendant in the shape of Sisu. It's an attempt to gain her trust, only to stab her in the back. This is the big foreshadowing in the film. Anyway, in an attempt to steal the dragon gem, it breaks and it releases the Druun onto the world once again. Most of the world is turned to stone, each faction grabbing a piece of the gem for themselves as they attempt to escape. Taken in the attack is Chief Benja, leaving Raya all alone. Six years later, and Raya is searching the end of the final river in an attempt to find Sisu. She finds her. Sisu tells her that if they can find the pieces of the dragon gem, she can put it back together and return the Druun to their slumber once again. So they venture off to the different factions, meeting new friends along the way. The movie focus has, focuses heavily on the themes of trust and learning to trust, and I like the introduction of these new characters in each faction, learn to trust Raya, and in turn, she learns to trust them. Our first plus. Throughout the entire film, Sisu attempts to gain the trust of the chiefs of the different factions by bringing them gifts. She wants Raya to do this with Namari after Fang becomes the last place they need to visit. Raya eventually caves after comparing Sisu to her ba, father, and gives Namari the necklace back. However, under orders of the Queen of Fang, Namari pulls a crossbow on the group of friends. Afraid that she's going to pull the trigger, Raya throws her sword at Namari, who accidentally pulls the trigger and shoots Sisu. Sisu dies, taking the water with her. The dragons brought the water, after all. When the water that surrounds Fang disappears, the Druun, who are appalled by water, are once again set free on the few people left in Fang. Raya is blinded by her rage and almost kills Namari, but is reminded by Sisu that trust is important. The group of friends, which now includes Namari, put the dragon gem back together and sacrifice themselves for the greater good, just like the dragons. I like this metaphor. Plus, this of course was a fake out, minus, and everyone lives. The power of the dragon gem destroys the Druun and everyone, even the dragons, are set free. The day is saved. Characters. So for the sake of this review, I'm only going to focus on Raya, Sisu, and Namari as they're the only characters with any real development. The others learn to trust Namari, but it comes very quickly and kind of out of nowhere. Minus. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. So let's start with Raya. I love her. I love that she's flawed, I love that she hates herself, she lets her anger get the best of her. There's a quote from the character Bone who says, she's been blinded by her rage. Have you ever seen a Disney princess blinded by her own rage? I sure haven't. I love that she learns from her mistakes. I love that she's not trusting, I, she seems real. She has strengths and weaknesses and it's hard for her to admit she was wrong. She may be up there with my favorite Disney princesses. 
I also love Kelly Marie Tran's performance. It's very honest. Plus. Now we're on to Sisu. If I'm being honest, I don't love Sisu. Now I have this issue with a lot of recent Disney movies, but I don't love when they have the comic relief also be a plot device. Olaf's death in Frozen 2 helped Anna do what she needed to do, but at the same time, he's going around and calling for Samantha. Sisu kind of has the same issue. Before we meet her, she's made out to be this really serious dragon who made the dragon gem and everyone looks up to her and she's really important. And she is, but at the same time, she's also played by Aquafina, who's a comedian, and she gets a lot of the funny moments in the movie, and she's made out to be the comic relief. There's also Tuck Tuck, but he only gets a couple of visual gags, and they get old really quickly. He's the animal sidekick, by the way. Then about halfway through the movie, there's a scene where she's talking to Raya about how she hates that people lie, and that the world would be better if people trusted each other. After that, she kind of shifts gears and becomes this really serious plot device in which her whole purpose is to get Raya to trust Namari, and she dies. But then she comes back at the end of the movie and she's cracking jokes again. It's very back and forth and I think it's a little jarring. She's only serious when the story calls for it. Now, I'm not saying that a character has to be serious or be funny the whole time, but when it comes to comic relief, the whole point is to crack jokes. It's comic relief, after all. They clearly wanted Sisu to be the comic relief here as she makes the obligatory butt joke for kids, and there's a scene where she accidentally steals things by using credit. I think someone else should have been the comic relief, like the baby or Tuck Tuck. They shouldn't be setting the comic relief up as some giant deity. And finally, there's Namari. Namari is the Princess of Fang, and I'd say even more of an antagonist than the Druid. She's egged on by her mother in the prologue to befriend Raya in an attempt to steal the Dragon Gem. They go after her in tail when it's found that Raya stole the scrolls that tell the story of Sisu at the end of the river. In Spine, she brings the entire Fang army to overwhelm Raya. They're even ready to kill her, but they don't. What I love about Namari is that she feels guilty. She doesn't want to do these things, but she has to do what's best for her people. Fang was blamed for the destruction of the Dragon Gem. If they fix it, everyone will forgive them and Fang will prosper once more. She has to steal from Raya to help her people. It's for the greater good. I like that she trusts Raya even though she can't act on it. When Raya gives her the necklace, it works. She trusts her, yet Sisu dies in the crossfire because Namari is a princess. This movie deals a lot with fictional politics, and I'm all for it. Namari also helps Raya learn her lesson when she says, you can blame me for Sisu's death, but you're just as responsible as I am, or something to that extent. Even though she has less screen time than the rest of the main cast, I think she's really well developed, and I like the struggle she has when coming to terms with the return of Kamandra. Plus. Other thoughts. One thing I really liked about this movie were the different styles and animation throughout the film. The film opens with a you're welcome from Moana style animation, the simple paper cutout designs that tell the story of the dragon gem. Then towards the end, they're making a plan about what's going to happen when they get into Fang, and we get to see all these plans play out in a comic book style animation with thick lines and shadows. The regular animation that we see throughout the film is also gorgeous. The landscapes are a particular favorite of mine. There's a scene at the beginning of the film where Raya is riding Tuk Tuk in the desert and sand is flying out behind him. Gorgeous shot. Plus. The only thing I didn't like when it came to the animation was the hair, especially on Raya. It seemed a little too real on a cartoon character and it kind of pulled me into the uncanny valley a little bit. Minus. So, there's all my thoughts on the new movie, Raya and the Last Dragon. With a total of five pluses and four minuses, I would give this film a Disney plus. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, like, subscribe, hit the bell, you know all that YouTuber shit. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!